OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Thank you all for coming to this webinar. And Penny, go for it. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to share my screen here real quick so we can have another little picture going on. Hopefully everyone can see that. My name is Penny Pearson. I'm a coordinator here at OTAN and I work in online and distance learning programs. Um, you are here for round two of open educational resources to enhance adult learning. So we're going to go over this really quickly because it is part two. Um, with a show of hands, I got to make sure that I can actually see this show of hands. Um, can you give me just raise your hand in the um, in the, through that little button at the bottom of your screen and tell me if you attended part one, okay? Just raise your hand if you did. If you didn't, that's fine. Just raise your hand if you did. And Irma, we've got you in here four times. <laughs> might wanna pick one, otherwise you might be hearing me four times over on a delay. Okay, so, so far, looks like I got a brand new crowd. Cheryl is the only one showing that she has been to part one. So, <clears throat> all right, hang on guys, hold on to your seats and we'll do the best we can. And we're gonna go through some exercises today and I'll do a quick review. So as Melinda mentioned, I'm going to try to be working with you so you can have a little bit of practice. So I, if you can, this works really well on multiple monitors. Now, if you can't, that's fine, just follow along. But if you can open up a web browser, so it's Chrome or, or whatever, and open up a word processing program. So you might use Microsoft Word, you might use um, Google Docs, doesn't matter. That could be your you know, browser window with two tabs open, it's fine. Um, I want you to find an image that you took, okay? Meaning you took the photo. That tells me that you own it, you own the copyrights to that photo, okay? So you're gonna need to be able to switch through those places as we go through the presentation today. And just as um, uh, Melinda was showing you, you can get out of full screen in Zoom and manipulate your windows. And then when you need to see the, the Zoom screen at full screen, you can go back to that same option and go to full screen. So it's a little easier. I know this is a bit of a challenge when you're on a little tiny you know, window on your, on your laptop or something. And again, you don't have to follow along. That's not required. So let me see if I've got a question here that I might need to. Okay, thank you for that, for the no part one yet. So we're gonna talk about what we did before. So we talked about the definition of open educational resources. So for those of you that were not at that first session, please read through that carefully because this is important as we move forward. Um, open educational resources have been around for a long time, but they're just now kind of hitting their stride in the educational world, um, being able to use them in a manner that we like, okay? Now this is, um, Believe it or not, this definition came from, if you notice at the bottom of the screen, 2010. Um, and now the more recent versions of the National Educational Technology Plan, which I think the last one was in 2017, they don't even define OER anymore. It seems to be the most accepted, you know, we all know what OERs are. Well, if you don't, this is a good definition. Just remember these key terms here that are in bold. These resources reside in the public domain and they've been released under an intellectual property license. So that should automatically go ding, 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 copyright, okay? That permits sharing, accessing, repurposing, including for commercial works uh, and collaborating with others. So if you've got questions about that, go ahead and uh, we've got a Q&A pod, so you can post them in there and I'll do my best to answer them. What are open educational resources? Pretty much anything can be an open educational resource because it's all dependent upon how the creator of that resource licensed it, okay? Now, we're all creators in some form or another, just by the very fact of doodling a note on a napkin at a restaurant that is protected as a copyright, your intellectual property and yours under copyright. So the things that can be licensed, 
include podcasts, audio files, images, music, games, all kinds of things. I'm always one that says, well, anything digital can be, you know, licensed under a Creative Commons license. Anything even digitally, um, excuse me, 3D printed, they're working on licensing for that now. So we're moving more and more into this, what I like to call this um, sharing environment with our resources. So we need to talk about two things just to um, be clear. Uh, when we talk about copyright and intellectual property, we're talking about something that says, this is your property. It is owned by you. You created it. You control it. You decide how you want it to be used. No one else can use that, that material without your permission. That's copyright. Unfortunately, copyright has morphed over the last 200 years because originally it was actually written as a sharing piece of legislation. They, the, the queen who started this all said, everyone should share and be able to read. Well, uh, other people got involved and that changed. So this is today. We have intellectual property rules under copyright, but now we also can look at different types of rules, including public domain which means that the copyright and the ownership was completely waived. So I can take a photo, even though I own it and it's mine, I can turn it over to the public domain and says, this is yours, do what you will with it. I'm, I don't care if you change it different colors, if you put a mustache on it, whatever, I have given away my rights to the public, okay? The second one is versus an open license. The owner still retains the copyright. It is their intellectual property. Okay, good point. They own it, it's theirs. However, they have now by applying a license saying to anyone else, this is how you can use my stuff, how you can reproduce it, how you can modify it, how you can redistribute it across the world. So that involved this licensing piece, a concept of understanding the five R's, okay? The five R's of being open. Now, when we say open, that means it's a free cultural license. It is the broadest way that we can share our work. And it encompasses the ability to do these five things. First and foremost, <clears throat> you retain the copyright, you retain your intellectual property as your own. It can be reused under the license that is chosen. It can be revised. It can be remixed with something else, kind of like a mashup, and it can be redistributed. You can give it to your friends. You can post it on the internet. So those five R's are the foundation of what is a truly open educational resource. Now, the next question is, how do we do that? <laughs> it's all in what is an open license and how does it work? So turn up your volume a little bit. I'm going to play this video, and this gives you an idea from the creators of the licensing tool, which is called Creative Commons, how this works. Educational resources are automatically copyrighted when you create them under US copyright law. So let's say that I wrote a textbook, for example. I own that and nobody can use it without my permission. When we openly license that textbook, what we're doing is we're giving a license, we're giving permissions to the public to use that book under the terms of the license. Licenses are a part of the copyright system all around the world. They're used by big companies like when a clothing manufacturer wants to sell a super hero t-shirt. And so licenses are part of the fabric of copyright law. But all of those licenses are negotiated one-to-one. -one. So when a company wants to use a text or a song or a character or part of a movie that belongs to a different rights holder, they have to have their lawyers sit down with the other lawyers and it takes time and money. So adding a Creative Commons license to a work is like saying, hey, this resource is free for you to use however you want. The basic Creative Commons license is the CC BY license, or the Creative Commons Attribution license. And that's the most basic Creative Commons license. And all it says is you can use this work, this copyrighted thing, this photograph, this book, this song, if you attribute it to me, the creator. The reason a lot of educators and, and governments more and more 
are choosing that license is that the only requirement is to give proper attribution to the author, to the original creator. That's really easy to do. It also allows you to remix those works with other openly licensed works in a very easy way. And um, teachers have always given each other materials and if you know the person you're sharing the materials with, you can give them permission. But when you want to share materials with teachers across the country and potentially teachers across the world, you need a standardized way to do that. And that's what the Creative Commons licenses are. Okay, hopefully that gave a bit of an overview of the licensing piece. And the slide here is giving you the icons for that licensing, as well as some descriptions. So since many of you did not attend the first session, I'll leave this up for a little bit. So you can kind of get an idea of what the icons look like. You're gonna start seeing it um, more and more, especially as you start actually looking for them. But just to note on the left-hand side of the screen, under the licenses, there is a green box around two licenses. These are considered free cultural works because they adhere to the five R's that we talked about just a few minutes ago. That means that this person, the first one is CC BY that they mentioned in the video. And that means that all that I ask of anyone who uses my work is that they give me credit and um, they can do whatever they want. If they want to change my work, they can. Um, they can also use it for commercial purposes, which is usually what makes everybody's skin twinkle a little bit because, wait a minute, can somebody use my stuff to make money? Um, most cases, it would likely be in a book or something. They would likely come back to the author because they want more of your work because it's so good. The next one underneath that is CC by SA, and SA stands for share alike. They're basically saying, if I'm saying, if I'm sharing my work, I expect you to share your work as well. The other licenses are perfectly acceptable and allow for different types of uses. They just don't adhere to the five R's. They um, ask that something else be taken away. So like the first one in the top center column, it says, Creative Commons, attribution, non-commercial. Well, remember under the five R's for commercial use is okay. So that is not considered a free cultural work and it is not considered an open educational resource. However, it does not mean that it's not usable. The author of that work has told you exactly how you can use their stuff. Okay, the same is true for the other licenses, Creative Commons attribution, no derivatives. They can't change the work. More restrictive, CC BY, the meaning attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives. Okay, they can't use the work to make money. They can't change the work. And the last one is CC BY, non-commercial and share alike, which does mean that whatever you're using or taking under this license, you must also share. Okay, now I need to take a peek, see if we got any questions in the Q&A, just a second. Okay, Marin, that was all for you. Thank you for sharing, but uh, you're gonna be using that a little bit later, but thank you for that. Okay, let's move forward here. Click the right button. Okay, again, we're gonna try to do this together. So I would like you to, to make sure you have those documents, you know, a document open and a browser open. These are things you're going to be doing to license your own work, okay? You create, you make stuff. It can be a variety of things. You can be distributing photos. You can be using photos in your class presentations. You have to decide how you want to give permission for other people to use your work, all right? Then you're going to go to the Creative Commons licensing tool to get the mark that you need or the license that you need. All right, and it looks something like this. So stand by just a minute. We're gonna go out to creativecommons.org. We're gonna choose the license that we want by using this little tool. And at the very top of the page, there's a choose your license tool. So let me pull up here real quick. So I'm going to go over here to my Creative Commons. So here's my Creative Commons page. You'll notice this is a nonprofit. They will ask you to make donations. 
I contribute, I believe in this, it's entirely up to you. Up at the top, you'll see where it says share your work. Okay. Now, when I select that option, I get that big blue screen here that says, okay, the chooser helps you determine which license is right for you. And I'm going to click on get started. Now, I'm going to ask you to do this in a moment. So while I'm going through this, go ahead and switch over to your browser and type in the web address of HTTPS Creative Commons dot org. I'll type it in the chat. And we'll let you get started here in just a second. And as I pause, I am on the chooser page here. And I'm going to scroll down a little bit so you can see a little more. And I'm just going to demo it for a moment. And then I'm going to turn it over to you. So think about something that you have created. Maybe it's a handout. Maybe it's a PowerPoint presentation. Maybe you did something that was on a website and you were saving it as an image. Whatever the case is, you need to run through the chooser to figure out how you want that work to be used. So I have some question here, license features. Do you wanna allow adaptations of your work? Can it be changed? Yes. And I can also choose yes, as long as others share alike. So either one is fine, it's up to you, okay? My license icons over here on this uh, right side of the screen under selected license will change based on my choices. And if you have a super memory and you remembered what those licensing icons look like, this choice that I made says that I require you to give me attribution, to give me credit. If I were to answer this other question down here, allow commercial uses of your work to know, I want you to watch what happens to that selected license on the screen. Hopefully you've come back into the Zoom space so you can see what I'm sharing. And if not, I'll change it again in just a minute. But when I say no, I want you to notice what happens over here under selected license and this statement, this is a free cultural license, meaning it meets the five R's. When I choose no, that changes, all right? It doesn't mean it's not good. It just means it doesn't meet those five R's. Now I'm gonna go back to yes, and I have a license now. If I scroll down the page just a little bit, I can just simply select all this and I can paste it into my document on my web page. If I um, have a embed, embed capability on my web page, I can copy this code to put it on my website. Now, this doesn't say very much about my work. So I'm going to go to this square over here that says help others attribute you. This is very optional, but it's a way for me to provide more information. They got a little programming problem here on the page th these days, but that's because they're trying something new. So I'm going to create a license called this, you know, Penny's Creative Commons Work. And you'll notice under have a web page, it put my title in there. It gives me the name I'm going to attribute to. And I'm going to put in a URL where that work came from. And this is coming from my work. So I'm going to put in my OTAN address. Okay, and if you had others, you could, you know, if you had a particular page like a class website, so attribute work to, you know, Penny School District, the source of the work could be my actual class web page, right? Um, the format of the work is pretty straightforward. Most of the time I leave this at other formats or multiple formats, but you do have the option to choose that it's an audio file or it's an image or whatever. And when you do so, it doesn't make a lot of changes here. It's just telling what's called the metadata underneath the license, what it is that you're actually licensing. The other and multiple formats tells them everything as well. So now I have this nice little page here, this little icon with my um, CC by, it has the title of my work, it has my name, and that that links back to my website, which in my case is my office, and it tells me what kind of license is offered. Now, if I were to copy this, 
Okay, and I'm just going to use my computer and use control C or command C or whatever you'd like to use for this process. And I'm going to copy it to my local clipboard and then I'm going to bring my Word document up, which I apparently lost somewhere. Where'd it go? Here we go. And bring it over into my screen and I'm going to simply paste it. And there you go. I have my icon. I have the title of my work. This is a link that will take me out to my website. You can see how it popped up in that little screen tip. And secondarily here, this is a link to follow the license. This will tell anyone who wants to use my work exactly how they can use that work. So I just clicked that link and now I'm telling my users, anybody who wants to use my work, how they can use what you are wanting to use. So I'm just going to pause for a second, go back to my little presentation here, because I want you to try it on your own. So I want you to go to the Creative Commons site, select that choose a license, fill out the form like I just did, and then copy and paste the license in the chat. OK, now the graphic won't paste. That's OK. I just want to see you put the text in the chat. Now, extra points for anybody if you try the beta license chooser, which I did not show you. This is for those of you that are adventuresome, okay? Um, only, you don't have to, Kim, but it does guide particular folks back to where they might be able to ask you for either more permissions or, uh, you know, cut a deal with you to do more work. So it could be, um, I've seen people put in their LinkedIn um, pan, uh, their LinkedIn profile. Um, some folks have put in, um, you know, just text like, you know, contact me at XYZ, et cetera. That's okay, Kim, it's our, it, you know, it's, we're all in this together, you know. Um, the licensing tool is something that you can experiment with. So Todd, I see you got a Creative Commons attribution share alike. 4.0 international license. Sabina did it as well. So you need to understand something with this licensing is that now you're going to put that license where you want it. OK, I pasted it in my Word document. You could paste it at the end of your PowerPoint president you could paste it at the end of your google slide deck you could paste it in your google doc um, you could put it wherever you want to tell anyone how they are allowed to use your work okay so this is something that right now this is for licensing your stuff and we've just done this with a simple licensing tool that provides all the information Someone like any one of you that might be wanting to use, let's say, this PowerPoint presentation. That license will tell you exactly what you can do with it. You can take it. You can share it with other teachers. You can present from it. All that I would ask is that you would give me credit that all or part of what you're presenting was based upon the work you got from me. Okay. So I see we've got others popping in here. Kim did it. And we've got others, sorry, Lorena, she's a little more restrictive. She said, well, this is a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives. So you can use it, but don't you change it. Okay. So let's just take a second. Some of you still may be working on that and that's fine. So we'll just pause for a second. And if you want to raise your hand, you can, or you can just simply type in the chat. And I don't think I have any questions in the Q&A, so I think we're good there. And um, Sabina, yes. Um, and Sabina, that's a little more of just straight text because Sabina is asking about using it on instructional videos. That is generally done in the credits at the end of the presentation. So, you know, at the end when you're saying, you know, thank you to all these people, and then you would have an ending slide or an ending piece of text, you know, with your music under whatever. This work is licensed this way. Um, you would say this is, you know, this work is licensed under, you know, Creative Commons attribution. Please attribute, you know, my school and, you know, provide information like Maybe it's just a website for you to for them to contact you. It could be an email. You're just 
providing the information to the viewers of that video that that work can be used the way you have dictated. And there are some services that allow you to post videos and choose the license you wished to be used. So for example, YouTube, if you post a video, it is automatically defaults to the standard YouTube license, but they do have the option where you can change it to a Creative Commons license, which would allow anybody to use it. Okay. And Marianne Han, that's okay. Yeah, go ahead. We have a couple questions in the, in the q and I'm not sure you have it open. I just did. Oh, we will do photos, Todd, a little bit later. So I will show you how to attribute those. And I see um, the link to the creator, Marianne, Mar Marianne, sorry, got your name wrong, is just the, um, there isn't really a done. It's just copy the text that comes up on that licensing tool. Let me switch back over here so I can show you here. Let's get the right one here. So when I go back to, I'm at my license. When I go back to that licensing tool and I choose share your work, when I say get started, as I fill out these questions, my license appears over here and I'm just copying this text right here. There's no done button. Now, if you're on the beta chooser, for those of you that went out exploring, Okay, again, there's no done. It's just basically you answer the questions and you choose which license you need. Most of us are gonna be using the, the last one, but if you know these licenses like I do, you know, I would be checking here. If I didn't know, I would answer that up here at the beginning of this new chooser. And then I would put in all of my work. And if I didn't have, are you getting the message here, Marin? Now I see the done button. I think this is the one you're using. Yeah, you probably are. And I don't know if you're getting a message, but you do have to have titles in here. So um, I always, you know, try to put in information as much as I can, just because that's telling anyone how they can use my work. So, you know, I would put this in here. I'd put my information. Kitty Marin is, asked, is saying mm -hmm. that the last one link to create a profile I don't have. Not sure what to put. Um, okay, so what I don't think you have to put anything. Is that why it's not giving you a done? Last time I did it, I just put in, um, let me see, I can click done here. Yep. And now I've got all my information here. This is it, Mary. That's as that's as what it is. And I can copy it. Or if I want it for um, HTML, I can copy this. Yeah, Marin, you just were you were you were the explorer. You went out to the the new beta version. And what I've put in here before the link to creator profile is I've used my LinkedIn profile. And that way it sends people to get more information about me and they also could message me there. Of course you'd have to have an account, etc. But it's just a way to do that. And you probably could put in there maybe even I put that in see it's I'm not seeing it show up here because it's not a full URL right I'm not seeing because that's my Twitter handle it doesn't matter I'd have to put my whole Twitter uh, you know profile URL in here for that to work I hope that makes sense because this is a new tool and they're they're experimenting with it they have you know for websites they have also under print work or media so some of you were asking before this might be a way to copy um, text to put in a book that you're writing or something like that mm -hmm. any others that we're missing here uh there's one in the chat uh what is the difference between beta and the share your link way of getting a license it's right now beta just means they're testing it it's they the creative commons folks here always go out and and they ask that they try new tools um, they ask for feedback it's just a different way and they're and from my looking at this the real difference is they provide more attribution details okay but what it does is it gives this is the important part to me um, as part of the license, it gives um, machine readable code, okay? So this is what 
the the bots and the search engines they go all around the web and they collect all this information and it's collecting this in a way so when i want to do a search if i knew that you know melinda did something i could technically put in her name and it might or might not bring up the work that she's done if she didn't provide that information in her license then i wouldn't find it so this is just a way to add more information to a license and most of this information here, because it's not showing up here, <laughs> is because it's in this machine readable data. Um, and that's for benefit of when you put stuff on the web. And I, and I hope that's useful. Um, so how did you do? Were you able, were you successful in um, creating a license? I know many of you were because you posted it in the chat. So I think that's awesome. Now you know how to do it. It's not saved anywhere, gang. So sometimes people want that. They're, they're, uh, th that tool isn't available yet, but they're hopefully working on it. Any other comments or questions about just getting to Creative Commons, making the decisions on how you want your work licensed, and then we can move forward. Kim, thank you for that. I just want everybody to have an option to choose the licensing that they would want for their work. And of course, I'm going to encourage you as you make your handouts and you create your slide decks that you add your license to your work. And the reason why is because then anybody that happens upon your work and likes it they know exactly how you are going to allow them to use it. Okay. Are we ready to move on? If I get complete silence in crickets, that means yes. <laughs> Where should you post that license? The license itself is pasted or posted on the work itself. So if you were to be writing a book, you could put it on the inside page or at the end of the document. When I put them in my PowerPoint presentations, it goes on my last slide. So someone knows when they get to the end of my slide deck how they can use my work. If it's a photograph, that one can be a little more tricky because if you're posting like out on uh, Google Photos, it's not so easy to indicate the license in that environment. But there are other tools um, such as Flickr that I'll be showing you later that allows you to set the licensing on your work. So it really depends on where and what you're going to use uh, your materials at, okay? Um, and when you have things on a website, you can copy that HTML code and depending on the environment, a lot of times the editors will have an HTML option. Um, I've been experimenting with several. Some of them work really well. Some of them don't work so well. <laughs> I haven't tried it in a, a, a Canvas course. I've tried it in Moodle and it works fine. So you just have to experiment a little bit and understand that there's this kind of copy paste into a product like a word document or you copy paste into a a, a um oh a powerpoint presentation or you copy paste into a google slide deck or if you have web pages you have a website where you want to make sure that individuals know what's on that site you would copy and paste the HTML code into a, maybe it's just a, a, some type of label or, um, you know, each of the LMSs have different types of activities. Um, so you would have to experiment a little bit to see how your students would see it or how other teachers would see it so they would knew, know how they could use your work. Um, Kim, that's a really good question that she's put in the chat bot. If I'm only doing slides, handouts, et cetera, for my classes in Canvas and I have no public website, it seems putting a license isn't necessary. Yes, that's entirely true until your work gets out into the wild somehow. So let's say you have a great PowerPoint presentation that you share with your learners and they download it 
and they're sharing it with all their friends because it's so cool, you would probably like to get credit for that work. So if another teacher came across it, they would know where it originally came from. If you are highly in control of all of that, then licensing is entirely up to you. And Canvas and other LMSs have their own issues because your work may not be licensed in this way because your classroom is a closed environment. Everybody gets in with a username and a password. That's fine. Most of the stuff you're doing is for that class only and they're in this closed environment. But if they're not, then your work can be basically out on the wild web and anybody that comes across it can copy it and use it. If that could happen, wouldn't it be best to tell them how that work could be used? Now, if you're posting on other public sites, your photos maybe, or you have um, you know, a Google site of some kind and people can come, across, uh, come upon, upon that to find materials because they did a web search and the metadata came up with, hey, Kim did this great handout on, you know, grammar or whatever the case may be, and they go to, you know, download it, they may or may not decide to ask you for permission because you do not have to mark your work with a copyright symbol. You don't have to do that. By definition of you creating it, it is copyright protected which means people should ask you for permission if they want to take your work. But too often that doesn't happen because there's enough folks out there still that think, well, if it's on the web, it's free, I can use it. That is not true. The materials are still protected by copyright. So you should ask permission and hopefully they would ask permission of you as well. But to, to um, ward against that by applying this license, you are at a minimum telling anybody who does want to take your work, sure, take my work, just you have to do this for me. And like I do, I just say, give me credit. But that's a very personal decision on how you want to license your work. Okay, so let's move on a little bit. We're gonna look at images. So this is where you have an image. You're gonna copy and paste it into your document. And we're going to go and select a license and we're going to add the title of the work so my cute puppy at sundown if it's on a website we'd want to add that website and for those extra points you could add your linkedin twitter facebook profile url not your handles but your profile media url and paste that license in the chat again the graphic won't paste but that's okay and if you want to try that beta license chooser and maybe use some of that other options for you know, images, you might see a little bit of a difference. But again, you are making a decision about how your image can be licensed. And I'm gonna be showing you another tool for when you take materials to help you properly attribute that work. So I'll give you a couple of minutes to give that a try. I feel like I need to have music or something to give you a moment to give that a whirl. And some ideas that you might consider if you use some, um, you know, photo posting websites or something, you may want to create an album that is all of your photos that you are willing to put out under license either as CC BY or CC by share alike, whatever your license is. And you just create that album that says, here, you can use these if you find them useful. And a lot of times, you know, folks are looking for, you know, real photos, photos of people at work, photos of people in a school setting, photos of teachers teaching. It can be any number of things. And by using them that have been taken and they're well composed and you know of good quality they're just it's just so much more real than you know models you know modeling around a computer screen or something like that so if anyone tried the image because i'm going to show you later on how you might provide that credit in a document 
and make sure that everyone who's using your images knows how you are permitting them to be used. So if you're out still working on the license tool, I'm going to give you about another 30 seconds or so and I want you to come back into the Zoom room, please. Melinda, you might have to note this for cut out this long silences. <laughs> OK, so if you come back into the Zoom room, nobody posted in the chat, so that's OK. So let's go ahead and let's move forward here and let's look at, you know, OK, you've just seen how you can license your own work. So you know how people will be licensing their work. The trouble can be, how do you find them? Oh, boy, this is where it can be very difficult. And I will tell you repeatedly, 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 always read the license. So I would like you now to think about something that you use in the past. And I want you to post it in the chat, like it's um, whatever the website is, and tell me if you can find the license of how those materials can be used. And I will suggest you look at the um, usage rights copyright that might be at the bottom there might be terms of use or something like that because all of us have kind of our favorite sites and when you use those sites to get materials sometimes it's very difficult to figure out what the license is so as you think about that i'm going to bring up a couple of websites that we can actually um, look at and look at what some of those licensing pieces look like okay so I'm going to bring a couple of these up. This first one is called OER2Go. And it's from an organization, nonprofit called World Possible. And basically what they have done is they have taken snapshots of various web pages, as well as worked with licensing with all of these different organizations that are listed on the page. So there's CAUSE from Sierra Leone, there's College Credit Courses, there's CK12. As I scroll down here, you'll see more from English Storybooks, uh, G GCF Learn Free, and there's also Great Books of the World, which is, I believe, out of the Gutenberg Project for copyright free books, Khan Academy Light, Sailor.org. All of these allow you to find content and materials that are openly licensed. So um, close your eyes because I'm going to go and scroll to the top. I'm just going to go into book dash here. Cookie chilling with a stick. Well, that sounds like something, Todd. I might want to want to see that picture. Anyway, <laughs> it's all right. So I'm on book dash books. And this is a bunch of storybooks that come out of Africa. So when I go and look at, say, the lost laugh, okay, now I'm digging into my material, right? I'm, I'm finding something that sounds interesting that I might share with my learners. So oh, this was going to take a minute to load. But I need to make sure that I know how I can use this work. And so, uh, Marianne, I see no worries. I, you're on a web page, but you can't find a license. Perfectly understandable. Um, and actually, I, I'm glad you had that experience and I'm going to try to help you see where you can find the license. So, okay, looks like my system is just being slow today. I'm, being, I'm out in the boonies, so sometimes my internet connection gets a little stuck. But, I, oh, the little bar is going again. So let's see what happens. So remember, I was on OER to go, and then I selected Book Dash. And Book Dash is a site that offers reading books for young children and all children. I mean, we all like books. And when I look at this, this is an 18 page book and who it belongs to. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. So some of you asked about documents. So I'm looking at this inside page of the book and here's a whole paragraph here that tells me how I can use this work. 
The work is licensed under Creative Commons attribution, and you are free to share it, copy and redistribute the material in any medium or format, and adapt, re trans uh, remix, transform, and build upon the material. This work for any purpose, even commercially. The licensor cannot revoke these freedoms as long as you follow the following license terms. And they're very straightforward. You give credit, you provide a link to the license, and you indicate if changes were made. So some of you might be, you know, aspiring writers and you want to add a different ending to the lost laugh. You could do so with this book because of the way that the authors have licensed it for use. Okay. So again, I went to a source which was under OER to go and I was looking for material. So you might want to look at, you know, some of the other items here, maybe career for girls, um, boundless textbooks. Maybe there's textbooks in there that you could use, um, you know, from economics or microbiology or US history or communications. These are all searchable textbooks for topics, including a lot of um, links for definitions and things like that. By selecting them, you can find the license. Most of them are very easily found at the top where it says CC by share alike. Okay. So this is just one resource, which is OER to go. It's one of my favorites because they do keep it. They do re, um, update it every year. Um, and sometimes you can find some real gems in here. Another one. Um, that might be useful is a couple of them. There's OER Commons, and there's another one called cool4ed.org. And this is out of California, so let's go take a look at that one. Cool4ed is basically coming from the California Open Online Library for Education. And so as you scroll through the page, you can see that looking for free and open materials for your courses, you can look for course materials, textbooks, online courses, and other journals. So they have a little system here about how you can find information. Um, they can, you can find textbooks by ISBN if you know it. You can look up by key terms. Um, so there's an amazing amount of material here at no cost to you. So let me go to open textbooks, e-textbooks. Somebody give me um, one of these that I should pick. Just shout it out in the chat pod. Which one should I look under? I got to choose from these buttons right here. Math. <laughs> Why did I not find that surprising? <laughs> so under math, I'm going to look and see what they have. So we have, you know, stats, first course in linear algebra, abstract and concrete in algebra, the open math reference project. Okay, and as I look through these, I have a link to go and look at more information about that material. So let's uh, do one, let's do this first one, online stats. Author is David Lane. Oh, it might be a little dated for you, but it was modified just recently, like a day ago. So let's go to the material and see what it looks like. And I can download the simulations and the source code. It gives me uh, any portion of the case studies. They want you to contact David Lane. Have you seen a license yet on this page? To me, this is something that's been around for a long time. Gives me permissions to link to any of the Rice Virtual Lab, but I don't see another license here. But since it was on Cool4Ed and since it was on the Center for Online Learning and Teaching and Online Teaching from Merlot, I would say if you were really worried about it, I would definitely contact David Lane and see how and make sure that there were no issues. But since you're getting it from this source, from um, Merlot, which allows you to download, you do have some other options for how you might want to filter your work, but it does give you some good um, resources here. Not all of them are going to be blatantly like that last one. That uh, was a good example. This one's a little easier because I can see when I opened up introductory statistics, I see more about material and I see very clearly that this is a CC by licensed work. Okay, so that's um, 
CSU and the Cool 4 Ed. The other one that's a little rougher, but also, um, oops, wrong one. OER Commons is what I want, is OERcommons.org. And this is a site that um, has been around for some time. You can sign in for it. Um, they have various groups, which I'm happy to say that one of the featured groups, I still love this, it's Adult Education, Open Community of Resources. And this was um, a group of adult educators across the United States that were part of a pilot project that went out and looked for materials and added it to this repository, this group. So when you open it up, you can see that there are um, lots of, there's 515 members, 513 members. They have over 300 resources, which in the World Wide Web world is not very many, I understand. But they also have it folders for different topics. And you can go through and look at any one of these under, so let's say I'll choose digital literacy, that seems to be popular. And I might look through here and say, well, there's a quiz, there's a money quiz, writing in Google verse. So all of these, I'd have to go and check out to see what type of author or uh, license they have. So let me just do digital learn. So when I open this up, I see immediately what the license is. CC by NCSA. Somebody tell me in the chat what that means. CC by, it says right there, what do I mean? Attribution, non-commercial, share alike. That was a silly question, sorry. But now you know how you can use that. And they have a little button where you can go out and actually view the resource. You can save it to your account. It links easily into Google Classroom right from OER Commons. So I would encourage you to go out and create and register for an account and then search materials on here. They do have the ability to evaluate the resource, which I, I strongly advise that you do when you find a good one. Let the person who um, authored it know. Um, if it's standard aligned, it would show up over here as well. And the uh, last I heard, OER Commons was also um, adding CCR uh, the um, California Common uh, CCRS. Now I can't think of what the acronym means. Common Core Readiness Standards. My brain just stopped for a moment there. So again, we have OER to go. We have Cool for Ed. We have OER Commons. These are all great places to find materials. But how many of you go would go to come at one of these right away? Where do you go first? I'm going to put this in the um, and check it out here, Liz, what people are posting. The Google. Yes, notice he used capital letters there, right? So common lit, what do we know about the licensing here? So if I look at explore products, how can I use it? Specialized assessments. See, and I'm going to go down here and go, okay, this is great. Everything, everything's wonderful. They've won awards. Wow, it must be really good stuff. I see down here it's a nonprofit organization. That's cool. I frequently asked questions about blog copyright 2014-2021. So that doesn't mean that their materials are licensed that way. It's just this website is licensed this way. So I don't know, Evelyn, if you've ever looked at any of their materials, do they show a license on their materials? Maybe you can share that without me having to go too far into it. But you're right about the Google, okay? And everybody loves Google. Google is one of the most powerful and online resources, you know, search engines out there. But just because I type in a term to search for materials, I don't know, I am gonna get millions upon millions of hits, right? But you can use the advanced search features to refine your search. So the more finite your search term, the better. But if I just use something um, like basic math worksheets, and I type that in, I go, oh yeah, only got 109 million, that takes a while. But I have no idea how many of these might be Creative Commons licensed. So I'm going to go up under my settings button here. Okay. I'm going to drop it down and choose advanced search. Thank you for that, Evelyn. Um, 
CC is the Creative Commons. If it was a C, then it's usually copyright. So that's good that you checked. So now in this page, this is the advanced search under Google, and you have lots of options of how you can refine the search by putting in phrasing or using the words or, or minus signs or using different measures of unit measures. The one I'm most interested in is down here at the very bottom, usage rights. Right now, by default, Google searches with not filtered by license. But I can drop this down and I can choose what kind of license am I looking for? So if I wanted the most open, I would probably choose this one, free to use, share or modify, even commercially. It has other options here and you can experiment to see on your search term which one might be the best. But if I were now to change my basic math worksheets that are licensed as free to use, share or modify and click advanced search, hopefully my 109, um, my 109 million will be reduced. And Kim, you won't see that advanced settings until you type in a search term or you go to the advanced page first. Okay. So now I'm going to go, okay, I got to go and figure out which one of these might be ads, which one looks good. Some of these I'm like, well, you know, now here comes all the hard work, right? I got to go figure out which one of these I could actually use because I still how many did I get I got to see what my um, what my results were I always forget how to do this there should be a number here somewhere and now they've changed it Melinda was right they keep moving the cheese all the time I used to be able to see up here how many I reduced it from my 109 million down to whatever so if I were to select one of these I'm going to really have to look carefully that um, these worksheets are uh, going to let me use them the way I want to. So I'd have to, okay, I see right now there's pricing. Oh, wait a minute, I don't have to pay for these. Oh man, now they want me to, you know, put in my info, download free samples. No, I'm, I'm just really wanting to see what can I get that's licensed that way. So right now I'm like, okay, this is, this is not Creative Commons license. They're trying to get me to buy a service. So that's why using Google is not always your friend. Thank you for posting the advanced search page, Melinda. So you have, this is where your due diligence comes in. You have to make sure that you're actually getting what you want, which is something that you can use the way you want to use it, either to, you know, just share it with others, or if you want to modify it and things like that. So although Google is our friend, sometimes it's a little more challenging to find those resources that are truly Creative Commons licensed. So it's something that I encourage you to do that due diligence. If you have a favorite website that you use to the point even of contacting them and saying, how can I legally use your materials without getting into trouble? Because unfortunately, a lot of times what happens is they'll give you freebies, right? Oh, here, here are these really nice handouts you can use and they'll give you five. And then they say, oh, if you want more, you need to subscribe. You need to buy more. Um, and I, you know, being a sharing type person, I'm like, well, you know, it's kind of like you only gave me half of the cookie when I wanted the full one, right? So these are your decisions on how you would want to move forward with using search engines like that. But in the case that I have on my slides, you know, Google advanced search is one way to start, but you might want to use some of these others. If you're not familiar with OER Commons, I showed it on the screen. I did not show CK12, which is a place where you can get um, online flex books and they are openly licensed. And just so you know, this is a big secret right now. We are working to, we are partnering with OER Commons to provide down here in this section where it'll say adult education and providing online textbooks for our high school completion, GED, adult post, uh, adult secondary um, types of courses. So keep an eye out for these. So these are places where you can explore by the types of um, devices or the types of things you want. Um, you can explore by subject area, etc. So it's a great resource if you haven't seen it yet. Okay. And don't tell anybody I told you about the partnership.
Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's see where we can go from here. How much time we got? Left? Okay. We're good. Okay. Now I'm going to do, uh, <clears throat> how am I going to do this? I am going to post some um, activities here. Hold on a second because I need to miss out of the way. Otherwise, I'll give away all the answers. So hang on a second here. I'm going to post some links here and I want you to tell me what the license is. So hang on just a second. Okay, so this first one is called Penguin Bloom. And I did this particularly for Marjorie. I'm going to post it in the chat and tell me what is the license. See if that pops up for you. And I will continue with a couple more. And as I post these, pick one and see if you can find out what the license is. Okay. Okay. And I love this one. This is Mrs. Penguin's Perfect Palace. Tell me what the license is. I'm just trying to get you used to finding things on a page or not finding them. I'm not telling you that they're all in here and easy to find. One more. So as you find one, pick one, go out to the site and come back in the chat and tell me what the license is. And again, we're going to have a pause. So unfortunately, we'll just, I can't talk intelligently for the whole pause. <laughs> so on each one of these, I know what the license is because I went out and looked them up. So if you haven't um, taken a peek, just, just try one, that's all. And if for some reason, some of them don't open up for you, let me know. And we'll give you just a couple minutes more. Looks like either you're not finding it or you didn't, weren't able to do it, that's okay. I know it's hard to switch back and forth when you're on a small screen. Okay. Skills Commons. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Penguin's Perfect Palace. Yes. Creative Commons Attribution. Marianne, what did Flickr say? Because Flickr has both. See if you can find it. So I'm, I'm hoping you're not finding this too frustrating because I'm really just wanting you to get used to when you find things you want to use, you need to look for the license, okay? Not only when you as an author create work, you deserve credit. If you find other people's work, they deserve credit, okay? So that's the next section here. We're gonna talk about um, the licensing and how you can use it. Right, unglue it is a, a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives because it is a game. Yep, yep, upload February 26th, all rights reserved. That means that it is, you're, you're right, Mar you're doing good, Marianne. It's okay, you got it. Okay, so since we know a little bit now about how and why licensing is so important, let's get on to what do you do next? So typically what people get tripped up on a lot is um, crediting images. So I am, a, I am in favor of Flickr. There's a couple of other ones out there as well, but I like Flickr because they have this tool called the Image Coder. And they also have a second one called CogDog, and that one's a little more complex, but Image Coder does a really good job. And as you work in this field, you might find other apps that can help you with um, um, providing help with proper attribution. If 
they don't have a tool like one of these, then you'll have to give that attribution manually, like what we saw with the book or something like that, where it doesn't necessarily have links, but it's telling you how that work can be used. So I'm going to go ahead and open up image coder here as we move forward. So here is an acronym I want you to remember. TESL. TESL. Title. Author source and license okay that is a full and complete attribution title provides the title of the work as given by the original author provide the name of that author maybe it's a person maybe it's an agency maybe it's an institution who created this where did it come from was it a web page was it a publication where did you find it Remember, we're trying to be able to help folks get back to the original creator. Okay. And then what license was assigned or is assigned to that work? Tassel, title, author, source, and license. Okay. Any questions about that? Tassel. Are there anything in the Q&A? Nope. You guys are quiet. Are you getting something out of this? Is it helpful? Okay, good. Now, this is an image. This is an image of a moose. And I believe I'm gonna try something here. All right, you should all, if you can find your zoom bar at the top of the screen, there is three little dots at the end or sorry there should be a pencil that says annotate okay what we're going to do first is open up that annotate bar and i want you to pick the check mark stamp all of you pick the check mark stamp and now i'm going to ask you some questions and i want you to place that check mark on the screen to answer the question where and what is the title? Place a check mark where the title is for this image. Are you finding the annotate? I'm not seeing any check marks. Penny, I don't think we can give attendees annotation in a webinar. I'm checking the settings. Okay. Because um, I see it as disable annotation, so I thought it was on. It's on for panelists. We could mm. promote people. Yeah, it's okay. Somebody give me the title in the chat. Darn it. That would have been a fun tool to try this with. Yelk. Yep. That is correct. Angela wins. No, Todd got it first. <laughs> no, Mary got it first. Sorry, I can't read fast enough. Okay, so now we have okay. the title. Who's the author? Melinda, did I cut you off there? No, nope, we're good. Okay. Yep, Thomas Hazard. Okay. And what's the license? And CND 2.0. That is correct. That is correct. It is non-commercial, so I can't do anything that would potentially be making money or be soliciting for money. And I can't change it nd means no derivative works thank you todd you wrote it all out for us so this is a proper attribution we have a title we have the author okay so far so good t a s source hmm where do you think the source is in this line of text it's kind of fun I'm going to point, whoops, wait, I got to turn off my annotate here. Otherwise I'll get in trouble. So right here where it says elk, and that's a Latin term for the word moose, this is actually a hyperlink back to his Flickr picture. And this over here for Thomas Hausler is a link back to his Flickr account with all of his pictures. And this is a link to the actual license text. 
pretty cool, huh? So in order for this to work, we need to use Flickr. And there is something in Flickr called the Flickr Commons, which is what I use. So I'm going to go and let me see if I can bring this forward without messing things up too bad, because I have my image coder here. And I thought I had Flickr up. So I have Flickr here. Now, <clears throat> I just went to Flickr and I typed in the word moose. OK, now if I start looking at some of these going, oh, that one's so cute. I'm going to click on her face and realize down here, this is all rights reserved. Well, that doesn't help me. I don't want to use that. So I need to make sure that my licensing is selected. See up here in the upper left hand corner, right under photos, it says any license. I want to change that to what do I want? Either no known copyright restrictions, which equates in the United States to public domain, or all Creative Commons licenses. So I'm going to select that. Let's see what happens. Oh, we got a bunch of different pictures. Uh, so I like this bull moose out here. So I'm going to try that. And when I look, look, it says some rights reserved, which you're like, oh, can I use that? But really, all that it's saying here is this attribution non-commercial. Can you still use it? Absolutely. And so I like this photo by David Bailey, and it just says moose. All right. So I'm going to take the, the URL for this picture. I'm going to go up to my um, address bar, my Omni box. I'm going to call it up here. I'm going to copy this text. OK, I'm copying the URL. Now I want to go over here to image coder. Image coder is really straightforward. It says enter the URL for an image below and then use get code. So I'm going to right click in here or control V or however you paste into a doc into a space and click get code. Dun 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 dun. Oh, looky here. The link will link to Moose from Dave Bailey. To get the code for a different image, use the get code page. It's licensed as Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial under 2.0, which is a few years back. Tells me what I can do, tells me what I can't do. And as I scroll down the page, and a lot of times when I show this, people go, well, this doesn't help me. But if you scroll down the page, you not only get your code, but you can change the size of your image. So I can go to medium. Now I have a better image. And I see at the bottom, I have moose title. Dave Bailey, author. Source is under Moose because it's going to take me back to Flickr and my license. So I can simply drag across these and copy them. And I'm going to bring it up in my uh, Word document and paste. And voila, I could do that in Word. I can do that in PowerPoint. And I have a fully attributed image with the title, author, source, and license. It links back to them. So anybody who was uh, using this online can could click to it and, and link to it. They'd be able to see more of David's work if they went to his, his page. That's how easy the image coder is and why I tend to go to Flickr to find my images. There's lots of other places, but this is a nice way to do attribution using images. Now, does that mean you couldn't do it manually? Yes, you could. You could type the word moose and you could type CC by NC 2.0 by David Bailey. And then you could go copy the URLs for the image, copy the URL for Dave Bailey's main page and go find the 2.0 license for CC by NC and make these hyperlinks. I find that tedious, so I'd rather use the image coder, okay? So now that I have my image properly attributed here in my document, I'm good. I can just keep rolling right along. And if you're doing this on, you know, uh, in a PowerPoint document or even in a Word document, to make sure you keep it accessible, you want to make sure that you add alt text so they know what this is about. So unfortunately, it may or may not be as descriptive as you want. It says Moose by Dave Bailey on Flickr. Well, Actually, that's not too bad. I might say a photograph of a moose standing in a field by Dave Bailey on Flickr. 
but because I use the image coder, it took the metadata from that page and it provided me this nice alt text that you can decide to use or not use. Okay, are we okay with image coder and attributing your own photos? I want you to try it. If you have it on a website, that might be a little more challenging, but just think about that. What is that? acronym again we need to be aware of? Anybody remember? Tassel, one S. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so you've done this part. Let me see if I'm missing anything here real quick. Now, sometimes you're going to come across um, um, materials that you use that are a little, sorry, my, I'm going crazy over here on the other side here. Just a second. If I can find my title bar, I'll actually move it over. So sometimes you'll find things that um, this is going beyond um, images, going beyond finding works, um, but you may find material that you need to attribute that may be licensed as CC BY, but they want to give you a suggested citation for that work. And this is an example of that, sorry, where, you know, this is what they want you to cite in your work. So if you were to quote some, this is a, you know, this is a journal article, and this is kind of like how you would do a bibliography when you were back in college. So it is a, a way that you provide proper credit. And because of this link here, you're sending that person back to the original source that you're quoting anyway. All right. So I don't see any questions in the Q&A. So we've got a little bit of time left. Want to make sure that we've got all your questions answered. I know many of you did not see round one, which was much more in depth about licensing. Um, and, you know, finding and looking at Creative Commons as a licensing tool. So what, what I'm going to give you as kind of a, you know, forward thinking what to do next is um, learn about Creative Commons, choose your license, and then consider sharing your work in places like OER Commons. That's a very easy place to share. And I see Kim says that, yes, on Pixabay, all the photos are free to download. It says crediting isn't required, but linking back is greatly appreciated. Yes. Remember, you know, you're these people are sharing all these things, right? They go out and they do this work or they draw these vector images or they create these icons. And it's really just good manners to give them credit. They did this work. And plus, by linking back to that work, then you're allowing other people and exposing other people to that work and to that site and to the ability to use that image. And so they provide you with the text. Yep. Yes, this is it is sufficient because actually those Pixabay photos are in the public domain, but they're asking you to give credit. So, you know, if this is a, this is kind of that moral question, right? They're, they want you to give credit. I would suggest following Tassel. Title, author, right? T and, and now I just forgot it. Title, author, source, and license, right? And in this case, there really isn't a license because I believe all of them on Pixabay are public domain. But it doesn't mean you can't tell people that they're public domain. You can't tell them that this person, you know, Tumasu, provided this great image, and he may or may not have a title. So for those cases, this is one of my favorite questions, is like, if it doesn't have a title, how do you give it credit? So if, if I went back here and elk didn't have a title, I would put in here untitled photo and then link to where that photo is and provide the rest of the information, right? So I'm trying to, to encourage us all to share and to share with good manners because all of these other of billions of resources have been made available online for you uh, under an open educational resource license that allows you to do those five R's of being able to, you know, um, remix and revise and retain and redistribute and do all those things and still share with other people. So I want you to be a superhero. 
go out and share this information with others. I have other um, information on the slide deck, which um, we will get out to you. Either I'll send it to you, um, all of you that attended through email, so you can get to it. And um, I will also post it to my um, Google Sites page, which I'll give you the URL right here. Whoops. It's not up yet, gang, because I just finished this this afternoon. So I'm happy to share it. And as um, I do with, I practice what I preach, okay? You can use this as you wish. The only image in here that doesn't have attribution is my superhero image. I use a service called Presenter Media and um, I am allowed to use this work in this way under their end user license agreement without violating copyright.